Hey guys, Anthony 4 before diesel. We've got a few really important bits of information here, particularly if you have a diesel, common rail diesel. Um, firstly, quickly, I just want to speak about something before we go into this love letter and some other info. Uh, just briefly, the P0400 we've been talking about recently, very rare, only on a few vehicles, but we've currently got two vehicles, one in Queensland, one in Victoria, both that were faulting with a P0400 quite regularly. They both had the plate with a 7mm, um, like all the other vehicles that don't have any issues. We're trying to work out what the issue is. We've been through everything and currently um, undertaking clinical trials. No, just joking. <laughs> just r and you. Uh, basically, one of them is running a 9mm hole, one of them is running a 10mm hole, and both of them haven't faulted. One of them's up to 800 k's. This is a vehicle that would do it multiple times a day, and there's two of them. So between the somewhere going from this if you've got what i'm saying is what we believe it is when everything else is okay and most of the time everything else is okay if you haven't left a vacuum line off or a plug or got something back the front and the thing on the side's not seized and all the other things check out p0400 videos when everything's okay it can have a partially blocked egr cooler enough to reduce the flow that it combined with the seven mil hole not enough flow things are not happy p0400 so in increasing that hole with two examples both on 120 prados to 9 mil in one 10 mil in the other they've both worked so far to avoid the p0400 we still believe everything will stay clean because it's a balanced effect if you know what i mean so on the 7 mil we went to um, 8 mil first it it faulted again pretty uh swiftly so we went straight to 10 and with that information working, the next person went to nine and he's let me know it's up to 800K. So, so far, so good. Subscribe to the bell on so you don't miss the updates with that in case you've got a 1KD and you're running a seven mil plate or anyone that's got a P0400 now. This information here is very important. Okay, so this is a client that's uh, returned some injectors. I don't think there's any sensitive information there. I've just crossed out his uh, details. Hopefully you can't figure that out. You can't see what that is, can you? I hope not, because that means I have to start the video again. You can't see that, can you? Come on. Good, no, you can't. And you know what? Doesn't really matter anyway. You can't see, can you? Can you? I'm just looking at it now, I can't tell. So I'm gonna have to put this up in the VIP group. VIPs, if you could please put the comments first to let me know if you can make out the uh, phone number, whatever, I don't think anybody cares anyway. And we'll ask Steve and see if he's happy with it. Okay, so I'm, first I'm gonna read you his letter and then go into the important information. Dear Anthony Prado, thanks again for doing what you do. It's all good information as well as the support network in the VIPs. Thank you, and I just want to add, and thanks for the Dan Murphy's gift card. Okay, here are some of the bits I didn't use. Some should say all can't... Hang on. <laughs> hang on. Um, you know, is it my reading problem? Here are some of the bits I didn't use. Some should say all. Some should say all. Some should say all. Anyway, yeah. Can't delete a pen without whiteout. Oh, okay, there's there's the problem. Anyway, it's all good. Going off your vids, it did not appear as though they hadn't been replaced. We're talking about the injectors. The only thing I found was broken clips on the wiper motor panel on the firewall. On Techstream, this is the important part, guys. On Techstream. All the numbers were in spec. So all the numbers were in spec. Everything's in spec, right? He didn't write the kilometer, so I did. Okay, all the numbers were in spec, but here we go. But it was rattling hard, in brackets, insert, arrow up. But it was rattling hard under load, or rattling under load hard before replacement. So it had a really bad rattle under load, even though the numbers were good. So how do you reckon that would be? How, how good do you think the combustion would be if it's got a really bad rattle that the software can't hide it? And, and no wonder at those sort of cases. Anyway, rattling hard before replacement, very noticeable difference afterwards. So what I'm saying is don't take my word for it, take the client's word for it. Here's the love letter. Um, I didn't ask for it, it's just what happens. We love the love letters, I read them all and all that sort of thing. Especially when there's a Dan Murphy's gift card, but look, you don't have to do that, it's all good. Um, Car is an 11th 09 150 manual Prado. Okay, so that's good. Once again, thank you. You'll be hearing from me again for the BFE. If not, 
in the too distant future. You know how it goes. Cheers, Steve. Yeah, 282k that was, guys. So um, I'll say long overdue. It's one of those ones I've been banging on about for years. If you've got an old 09, they haven't got full DLC injectors. That's 13 years old now. Still better late than never. He'll probably have no issues, but there's always a risk that that was doing some damage to the pistons. You don't know if it cracks a piston in 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, then okay, we think we knew what is the main cause of that there. But always remembering, we still believe these engines shouldn't crack pistons. It's an abnormal failure. And I believe personally that Toyota uh, should be covering the engine. I mean, you know, they can say, oh, what do you expect to get out of an engine? But we've been through this in the other videos. There's a playlist there called free engines, okay? You've got playlists there's called injector information. You need to get yourself educated. Lots of people get these engines for free, whether it's under insurance or from Toyota. I'm not saying they don't do the right thing. I'm just saying that a lot of people have paid for engines. Um, it's not always easy to get warranty. And personally, because it's an abnormal failure, as long as you haven't got chips and tunes, and as long as you've had a reasonable service history, although service history hasn't, you know, all changes has got nothing really much to do with combustion and um, changing the injectors, which I don't know of anyone that's providing information that you need to change injectors to keep it running right. Much, if any, other than me, if you know what I mean. So I'm trying to help you here. That's the fact of the matter. It's documented by Toyota. Wrong combustion, you know, injectors, wrong combustion, cracked pistons, blah, blah, blah. There's uh, documents on that and the upgraded pistons, but of course even the upgraded ones can crack because it's when the fuel system isn't working right over a period of time. Wrong combustion, which they've documented on Toyota documents, that's what cracked pistons. So therefore, if there's an issue there, which it's, it is because it's documented, um, I think that, you know, it should be covered under whatever sort of warranty or extended policy, but that's that. Anyway, that's the video, guys. Just wanted to make a quick one to sort, kind of demonstrate it, uh, what I've said for years. The readings, a lot of so many people I still read on Facebook groups and our Facebook groups. Oh, you know, you know, so, talking about what year is how many cases. Oh, have you done the injectors? Oh, you no. Know, we, you know, we plugged in the, you know, the scan tool the other day, and all the readings are good. Mate, how long are you going to keep doing this for? It doesn't matter what the readings say from 0909. All the 150 Prados and the Hiluxes from there, you can't go by the readings. I've got two vehicles right next to me. This one closest to me, it's a, what was this, 11, wasn't it? 2011 or 12? Anyway, it's done about 200, just over 200. I have to have a look, right? We're just getting started on it. I don't know all the details. What is it? 220K, right? So 220K, right? You know, it's like, okay, it's running okay as well. But 212, at least they have full DLC. I don't care what you do. I just try and help you and share the information. So if you're learning, remember, subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss it. You're going to have a video every night, Melbourne time, whenever I got round to it. I can I can set them to come out at set times, but that'd be boring, wouldn't it? So it's whenever I get round to it. Sometimes we do it earlier in the day. When I say earlier, that could be 3, 4, 5, 6 in the afternoon or evening, but usually around 6, 7, 8 p.m. Sometimes I get a bit busy and I forget, and it might be 10 or 11 p.m. So stick around. Um, Check out those videos, usually around the 8 p.m. each evening, hopefully. Usually only about 10 minutes, but sometimes it's 5 and sometimes it's 20. But it's all good info. Thanks for watching. I don't know what else I can add in here. There's updates on two subjects here to help you make the right decisions. Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, and in case you didn't know, on Facebook, we've got a group called 4 Before Diesel. So you can get in that group. Anyone can get in that group. Doesn't matter what make or model. It's 4 Before Diesel. Then when you've got a problem, you can post it up and maybe someone that watches the videos would be there to be able to help you with your problem or maybe I'll see it and be able to help out. The problem we got is heaps of people keep texting saying, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Unfortunately, I'm unable to just help everyone one-on-one -on -one because I just haven't got enough of me to do that. I've only got one and it's completely inefficient. If we do it on 4 Before Diesel or whatever other one of our Facebook groups, then basically what can happen is I see at the top there, we don't use Messenger, right? If you do it on the groups, and I see it, I've answered and thousands of people can see it then, and into the future people can search and find it and browse through, they can learn. So stick around these groups if you want to be on social media. Our YouTube channel's at the bottom. Subscribe, turn the bell on, hit the like buttons and follows and all the buttons you need to press. Do your homework so you understand what's going on with all these vehicles. The phone number is text message service only. We had a bit of an update on that. We're doing a new thing, injector kits Mondays from 7.30am. Text message with all the usual details. Make sure you've watched that video. 
latest injector information that was from January 2021 so it's a bit old but it's pretty well the latest info a lot of things are going up we've managed to keep a lot of the injector kit prices down um, so get them while they're at the right price is what I, what I recommend because uh, I think things are only going to be going up even more and we're not going to be able to hold it down it's going to go beyond you know it's just going to keep going um, so there's that on Tuesday is your suspension Dobinson suspension Tuesday mornings from about 8 a.m. whatever send that text message Mornings is the go. We need to get stuff done in the afternoon. Wednesday for your BFE kits. Thursday for your Proto Highlights front wheel bearings. Got to go. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Subscribe bell on. Catch you on the next one. See ya.